This Ridley Report is brought to you by Libertania.com. In the, the late 18th century, you saw England and the United States, the predominant experimenters, really building these facilities. Um, and arguably, representatives from every major developed country around the world was fascinated by this new type of law enforcement technology. And in fact, the, the historical context of the United States gave um, the impression that it was very, very efficient, that it was very, very functional. Because at the time, uh, l late um, 1700s, early 1800s, most of Europe is an economic basket case they're mired in domestic political revolts as well as international military conflicts. The United States is a country filled with more or less farmers, which the sort of aristocracy of the old world thought were lowbrow and unsophisticated, and yet the American people at the time were getting along relatively well. They were having high rates of economic growth, and they were avoiding all of the sort of drama at the international level uh, that was going on for the rest of the major developed countries. So it seemed like they had a very unique ability to resolve the problems of social order. It seemed like this new technology was working well and so a lot of the developed nations sent representatives to look at and investigate and, and understand the, the prison system. Alexis de Tocqueville, uh, who, went, who went on to write Democracy in America, I argue uh, we, we often downplay the purpose of his expedition to the United States. He spent nine months hanging out in the only penitentiaries in the world at the time, basically, in uh, Auburn, New York, as well as uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, observing how it was that people were behaving within these institutions. And he was enlisted to write a book about this experience, which he did with a co-author as soon as he uh, finished his trip. But he was so compelled by the fact that all of these governments that were hiring these representatives to go in and investigate prison systems were sort of getting the explanation wrong. He, he was so compelled to write Democracy in America. Democracy in America is all about how civil society, how clubs and church groups was the really exceptional characteristics of the American experience, what he called a delicate art of civil association. I mean, to some extent, I would interpret Tocqueville's writing career as saying, hey everybody, I know you think that it's because of this heavy stick of criminal punishment that's promoting good outcomes in the new American experience, but I really think it's much more this carrot-based system, this, this beneficial result of learning by association that's driving the unique qualities. Um, very few of his contemporaries adopted that thesis at the time, and instead we saw the prison architecture replicated throughout the developed world. Like, it's ironic when you study development development economics in today's terms. We have trade channels that funnel resources around the globe. Um, Bill Easterly is a development economist. He juxtaposes the difficulty with which we have to distribute food around the world with comparison to how easy it is to get your hands on Harry Potter. Well, life was good on the outside for a while, huh? As easy as it is to get your hands on Harry Potter, it's infinitely easier for governments around the world to get their hands on the resources and strategies and, and planning manuals to operate criminal justice systems and incarceration facilities. At the time in the, in the 1800s, every major developed nation basically said, we like this model and we're going to run with it. It gave them an incredible amount of ability to not only control a population, but to change the nature of the legal system. They could more easily collect taxes, manipulate money supply, impose conscription in armed services, etc. And so, given that the dominant research on this program closely links the development of our modern form of imprisonment with the Enlightenment or the 18th century, it's really made it difficult for free market advocates to, to address this issue, in large part because what has tended to occur is that we associate uh, mass incarceration or very um, lavish and expensive criminal justice systems with capitalism or with advanced economies, right? At the same time in the 1800s, we have the Industrial Revolution, and a lot of the mechanisms and design features, like I said, Bentham designed this to be uh, comparable for a manufacturing house, are at play in prison design. So um, scholars like, um, in, in contemporary circles, especially inspired by Michel Foucault, 
um, recognize that it seems that Western liberal democracies tend to have tyrant. You're a tyrant, ma'am. Very expensive and very um, big and significant criminal justice systems, especially prison populations. So what this graph represents is the darker red countries have higher prison populations than the lighter red countries. And you see some general relationship of, of the United States as an outlier. And this seems to have exaggerated itself, not only in the post-industrial era, but also most specifically in our most recent times of uh, the 1980s and 90s, which m most people in social uh, science tend to associate with large expanses in uh, global markets, uh, the distribution of goods and services around the, around the world. And so this graphic gives you a, a, a sense as to how significantly um, new prison facilities have developed since 1900. So in the, in the 20th century, for example, not only did this technology uh, distribute itself around the world, all first world countries essentially uh, impose criminal justice law and order by means of the same device, incarceration, but also within the United States, it's had this sort of viral effect. It, I mean, it's like sort of watching outbreak and the Motaba virus, which is kind of creepy. Here again is just a general trend line of uh, per capita incarceration rates. So this is per 100,000 individuals in free society. Um, there tends to be, um, in the, since the 1980s, this massive uh, proportioned increase in, in, in the population per, per capita of our incarceration rate here in the United States. Libertania the Liberation of Conformia is a children's book that makes freedom fun. Although, I guess it's already fun. Buy it on Amazon, get it in print, or use it on Kindle. Teaching without preaching the ideals of freedom to the most important people in your life. Libertania.com